Welcome to the lecture series on deep learning in artificial neural networks. In this video, we will quickly discuss the no free lunch theorem. So here's a simple question for you. I have two data sets, A and B. Which data set looks more noisy to you? And I would like you to make a commitment. You can also think which data set is easier to fit. So if you think A, then you put your thumb up. If you think it's B, then you put your thumbs down. And so what is the answer? Well, A is easy to fit. It looks like a straight line with a little bit of noise. How about B? Well, B is also easy to fit. It's a wave package. And in fact, it's noise free. Now let's look at the fitting procedure in both cases. Here I have my data cloud and I would like to fit it with a line. It could be this line, it could be that line or this line. So with a line you have different slope parameters and this is the parameter that you need to fit. Now look here, this data set, is it easy to fit? Well, yeah, here is my wave package. I just have to slide it along and at some point it fits perfectly. So I only have one parameter and it's really easy to fit. So these were two examples and I would like to use them to illustrate the no free lunch theorem. It states any two optimization algorithms are equivalent when their performance is averaged across all possible problems. Now, this is a strong statement. The mathematical statement is called no free lunch theorem because these statements demonstrate that if an algorithm performs well on a certain class of problems, then it necessarily pays for that with degraded performance on the set of all remaining problems. Now, let's apply this. Let's take a neural network with many layers, a deep network. Suppose you optimize it with backprop. You can use a momentum term or the atom optimizer. And let's take this as an example of deep learning. Now, Statement one, do you agree? Deep learning performs better than most other algorithms on real world problems. Think about it. Pause the video when, if necessary. Do you agree? Yes, I would say this is correct. This is where the success of deep learning has come from during the last five, six, seven years. Second statement, deep learning can fit everything. Think about it. Is that correct? Yes, that's actually correct. With the deep learning architecture, you have a sufficient number of free parameters that you can fit whatever you want. Last statement, deep learning performs better than other algorithms on all problems. Think about it. Well, and this must be wrong. That's the point of the no free lunch theorem. So let's apply this to neural networks. Choosing a deep network and optimizing it with gradient descent is an algorithm. I think you agree. Deep learning works well on many real world problems. So now, what does that mean? Well, it means that somehow the prior structure of the deep network matches the structure of the real world problems we are interested in. How can that be? So remember the construction with the hyperplanes. These are my inputs. I have here a blue neuron. It implements the blue hyperplane. I have another neuron, implements another hyperplane, and so forth. 
So these four neurons cut out in the input space for hyperplanes. Now let's move one layer further up. So the red neuron will do some weighted average of these four blue neurons, and it might implement this hyperplane. But we have, I have other neurons in the same layer, and I, have, I might have other data. So now this brown neuron might do just the right separation to take care of this cloud of data. And I have even more data. And this purple neuron might take care of this data. And the yellow neuron might take care of even more data that's around there. So that's a bit the idea that with a simple set, with one set of hyperplanes, you can solve more than one task. And here's just a little illustration. Think of these kind of classification tasks where we have animals and animals can have four legs or two legs, they can have wings, they can have a snout, they can have eyes and tails or a fur or not a fur. Well, maybe it's this kind of structure in the problem that's well reflected by the hyperplane picture that's implemented in neural networks. This is just an hypothesis, it's just an illustration, but this might be a nice way to think about this. So, conclusion is, somehow the prior structure of the deep network matches the structure of the real world problems we are interested in. And the no free lunch theorems basically imply that you should always use the prior knowledge if you have some. Now, deep networks use a lot of prior knowledge. And the most famous example is actually the application to images. And I use this a lot, classification of images. And in fact, deep networks are flexible enough to do that. However, they are not as good. The raw deep networks are not as good. You need convolutional networks to really get good performance. And what's the trick of convolutional networks? Well, they implement translation invariants. A cup on the left-hand side of the image is a cup even if it's on the right-hand side of the image. It's the same cup, it's the same label. So the translation invariance has to, put, has to be put into the algorithm to make it a strong network structure. Think about music. You can sing a tune at different levels. You can see deep down, you can sing it high up. Now, more generally, any known symmetry of a task should be implemented.